I remember the first time I ever saw James Dean. I didn't know who he was. I was watching television. This play came on, something about uh, two hopped-up punks terrorizing a family, waving guns around, talking hip. And Dean was so good, so realistic, I, I found it difficult to believe he was an actor. I thought maybe the director had picked up some kid off the street, some kid who might have lived the part. Within 12 months, Dean was no longer an unknown. He was a star. And when I saw him in East of Eden, his performance moved me to tears. Ordinarily, a man doesn't admit a thing like that, but uh, in this case, I, I guess it's all right because there's a reason for it. Another year or so, and he was dead. And now, to tell you the truth, I don't feel sorry for him. I feel sorry for us. His death was rough, death always is. But you can't lose what you don't have. And in that sense, Jimmy didn't lose anything. He'd lived, he'd known excitement, tasted success. And then it all stopped. He didn't know it was going to stop, didn't know when. And when it happened, it was all over in two seconds. So don't feel sorry for him. Feel sorry for yourself, because Jimmy could have brought you a great deal of enjoyment. He was not just another good actor. He was one of the best. And in his full time, he might have set new dramatic records. Feel sorry for yourself because of all the glowing moments he could have brought into your life with the warmth of his talent. You know, albums like this, or uh, funerals, or graveside speeches, or wakes, or any things that involve people getting together and talking about how much they miss someone who's died, are always really brought into existence for the benefit of the living, not the dead. The living gather to comfort each other, to share their grief, to talk off the bottled up sense of loss. So, uh, that's the picture. If you're listening to my voice, it's probably because you miss James Dean. I'm with you.